Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's. We're glad you could be here on this kind of rainy morning. Uh, for those of you who were able to join us yesterday, we had a wonderful, wonderful ordination of the Reverend Brandon Haynes. Uh, it was just a glorious day, and thank you to everyone who helped support that in, in all ways. Uh, really was beautiful. Uh, I do ask you to give special thanks to Leanne Warner and Ted Warner, along with Brett, Sandra, and the whole Davis family for all the work that was done for Oktoberfest, which happened immediately following uh, the ordination. Uh, that was wonderful. The bishop left saying that he, he would like to have Oktoberfest every Sunday, so every week. So I don't think I don't think Leanne's up for that. So some other announcements. Uh, we just completed one of our series of infrequent conversations with uh, with uh, folks here who are authors or artists of any kind. This one was Jim Fowler joined us for uh, starting at 10 o'clock this morning, where he talked about his book, The Pain Trader. These will happen. We are blessed to be a community that has a lot of people that do various things in the arts, and we are blessed to be able to support that. So uh, next online, we're scheduling with Stephanie Vanderslice for her recent book. So more to come on that. Some other announcements. Uh, our Wednesday night's relaunch continues. We have about 20 to 30 people there. We start with a meal, uh, and then we do a short worship service and follow with a journey through the book B Biblical Cosmos. Last week, uh, Brandon took us to hell and back, which I think is appropriate coming before his ordination, uh, and uh, it, was, it was really a beautiful, beautiful, it's a good thing to do on Wednesday if you're not busy. And we're going to stop Greg right there. Just like your favorite PBS program, you are ready to hear the next thing, but here we are. Those were some fabulous announcements. They were they? fabulous yes. announcements. That's right. Do you know that we have now entered our 2023 stewardship campaign. It's pledge time again, folks. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. This is gonna be a wonderful, and is a wonderful partnership. You look forward to coming to St. Peter's every week, or every other week. But if you're a regular member, perhaps you'd also like to be a regular supporter. Right. And you can do that super easy. This week, you're going to get a letter in the mail that will have a pledge card in it. All you have to do, fill out the pledge card, mail it in, drop it off in the office, or bring it with you next Sunday and put it in the plate. This lets us know that you're going to support St. Peter's and the programs that are offered here every week. And let me tell you, St. Peter's makes it really easy for you to contribute. You could even have this deducted automatically right out of your checking account. I mean, if you're like me, sometimes I'd forget to write that check that week. Maybe I didn't even bring the checkbook. I thought, well, I'll do it next week. And then I wasn't feeling very good because a month went by. So this allows me not to worry about it. I don't even have to think about it. It just automatically comes out. It's a win, and I feel great about supporting St. Peter's. And every time you come to church, you get a handy dandy guide that's given out by the ushers that you can use during the service or you can take it home. You know, you might think that your pledge doesn't make a difference, but it does. It's like a choir. <laughs> so and we all come together, we make that pledge, and together it is a beautiful result. Every donation can make great things happen here at St. Peter's. You can, you can do $10 a week. You can do $20 a week. You know, the sky is the limit. We won't stop you, believe me. We'll take whatever. And your contribution absolutely does make a difference. Um, you know, you let us know what you wanted here at St. Peter's, and we strive to make that happen. It is a powerful relationship, and your financial support ensures its success. Absolutely. Look at what we just did this morning at 10 o'clock. We wanted educational programming for your brain. That's what you got. Or the Oktoberfest, the social event, and that was fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you are a supporter, thank you. Yes, thank you. You know, I wonder what announcements are going to be next, Chris. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Well, 
it is time for us. We are kicking off stewardship, so more to come. Uh, and uh, the theme this year is more than enough, and we're treating it as kind of a homecoming as we all come back together. Uh, just a couple of other announcements. Uh, this coming Sunday at 945, we will meet in the parish hall uh, for the Bishop search, Bishop search Committee Holy Conversation. In your booklet, it says Linda Brown Room. We're actually going to meet in the parish hall. This is your chance to weigh in on the selection of the next bishop. Bishop Benfield is retiring in 2024 which is the longest retirement, I, I call this his jubilee journey, that he goes to all the churches. So, but anyway, he's kind of in 2024, but the process is hard enough that we need that amount of time. So please join us next Sunday at 9.45. Uh, some other services that are unique coming up uh, next on November 6th, we celebrate All Saints. Uh, we will celebrate on November 8th, All Souls Day, and that is actually a feast of all the faithful departed which gives us a chance to take a moment and pause and reflect on and, and live in grief for those who are no longer with us. So that'll be at 6.30, uh, Tuesday, November 8th. Flowers this morning are in, in honor of, all fe of the feast days of all saints and all souls and given by our very own Claire Lissardo. With that, we'll be back in a moment. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray almighty and merciful god it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, the judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered and said, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you and for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. According to you, Lord Christ. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to his house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I tell you, what a glorious weekend we're having, even in spite of the rain. Yesterday we had Brandon's wonderful ordination. Over a hundred folks gathered here from St. Peter's, from St. Mark's and Jonesboro, and clergy and guests from across the country. And we had a wonderful preacher yesterday that made it extra hard for me to do this today. And that was followed by a festive return of our beloved Oktoberfest tradition. And it's even the eve of Halloween, a favorite of many of our parishioners, and I'm looking at you, Claire Lissardo and Mark Lamb. It's a time of great joy at St. Peter's. And you know what else is a cause for great joy? Stewardship. I'll wait for applause. Our fall pledge drive, as you heard, starts this week. And woohoo! <laughs> what, you don't find joy in our annual pledge drive? As hard as we try? So maybe we need to turn to our little friend Zacchaeus in today's gospel to catch a glimpse of the joy of giving and maybe its rewards. As you know, Zacchaeus is a favorite kid's Bible story. Our child care room has several books that include this favorite story. And it's easy to understand why. I mean, it's got all the parts. First, Zacchaeus is, as they say in the scripture, short in stature. 
And I think that makes them extra relatable to kids who spend their days looking up at us adults. Zacchaeus is most appealing to kids, I think, because of the energy that he shows. He's constantly on the go. This morning, he runs ahead of the crowd. He climbs a tree. And, and what's more kid appealing than that, climbing a tree? How many of our own kids have almost broke their arms or legs hanging from the crabapple tree in the courtyard? When Jesus sees him, Zacchaeus climbs down, rushes down, and he gets the news that, Jacque that Jesus is staying at his house, a sleepover. Yet again, a favorite of the under-15 set. You know something, as you know, people often complain about the younger generations, and probably have for centuries. You know, today we hear complaints about millennials or Gen Z or, or whatever kids today are called. It's quite common for people to rag on younger generations. You know, they grumble about Zacchaeus too, which probably makes him even more likable to kids who hear the story because they've been there. They've been grumbled about. But here's the thing. Unlike them, Zacchaeus isn't a kid. He's an adult. And we're told that folks grumble about him because he's a tax collector. And no, not just a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. And he's rich. The tax collector takes tolls due to Rome from the people, and they often keep a little bit of it for themselves, hence the rich part, or that's what everyone thinks. Now, I, I know it's hard for us to ever think about a person in power, like, like a politician or a political appointee, ever keeping any of our hard-earned tax dollars. See, that never happened, right? But the folks of Jesus' time believed that was pretty much the norm, the standard. The assumption is, by them, that Zacchaeus had become rich by his greed and dishonesty, stealing from his own community. Well, he is rich, and he is powerful, which makes his climbing that sycamore tree all the more remarkable. See, rich and powerful people, in my experience, like to take, them, like to take themselves seriously. And here's this rich and powerful man, the chief tax collector, willing to climb a tree just to see Jesus. I imagine our own attorney general or secretary of state climbing a tree, and it just ain't going to happen. Zacchaeus is willing to humble himself by doing an undignified, even a childish thing, climbing a tree, because of his desire to change and become worthy. He welcomes Jesus into his heart and his house. We're told that Jesus invites himself for a sleepover, and Zacchaeus was, in our version, happy to welcome him. The King James Version uses different language for happy. It says, and Zacchaeus received him joyfully, full of joy. Joy is the appropriate response to God's invitation. Jesus invites himself, invites him down from the tree, and Zacchaeus is joyful. But why? Where is his source of joy? Now, apart from the news of this divine unexpected guest, which, as, as you, you have to admit, is a lot, but I wonder if there's not more. The more isn't found from his fellow townsmen of Jericho. Now, as I mentioned, we're told that the crowd grumbles when Jesus reaches out to him, saying, Jesus has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. The cause of Zacchaeus' joy, I think, is on the way you read the next part of the story. Our translation says, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Which sounds like a pretty standard repent and mend his way kind of story. But would that elicit a joyful response? A promise for future giving? If so, should we call our pledge cards, which you'll, as you heard you'll receive this week, should we call them joy cards? since the giving promise you make will surely elicit joy, right? If that's the case. Now, I actually think joy, Zacchaeus' joy comes from a different reason for his giving. Again, citing the King James Version of translation of, of this scripture, and as we all know, the King James Version is the actual English that Jesus spoke, so. <laughs> this version approaches this verse differently. It suggests that Zacchaeus is already doing those things when he meets Jesus. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, 
Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. See, in this, in this reading, Zacchaeus isn't talking about what he will do, but what he's already been doing. And it turns out this, this idea is of Zacchaeus simply continuing to do his good work. And perhaps this is the reason that Jesus recognizes Zacchaeus up there in the tree and calls him down and invites himself to stay at the man's house. Then Jesus announces, today salvation has come to this house. We and probably all of the crowd in Jericho might feel that Zacchaeus is saved because he willingly gives his riches to the poor. But what does Jesus actually say? He starts off, today salvation has come to this house. But then he goes on, because he too is a son of Abraham. Jesus says Zacchaeus and all his household are saved simply by being the people of God's covenant with Abraham. Zacchaeus is saved because of his faith, not because of his works. And we know this is the nature of salvation, as hard as it is to try to remember. Salvation is not based on works, but on faith. But then why do any good works? Why pledge any of our time, our talent, our treasure? I think we can learn from Zacchaeus here too. What if Zacchaeus' good works are the result of his faith? And if his joy, his delight comes in following God's commandments? Put it another way, in doing the right thing? Maybe Jesus sees that joy, that delight, that faithfulness, and invites himself over for a divine sleepover. Now, who are we in this story? Are we Zacchaeus? Are we quietly giving of our treasure and our heart, knowing that we'll be seen by Jesus, ready to climb a tree to do so, even if the crowd grumbles or ignores us? Or maybe we're the crowd ignorant of those in our community around us whose faith may be deep but unrecognizable or unseen? Do we gripe and complain about them because of their power and riches or maybe just the opposite? We gripe and complain because of their powerlessness and their poverty. Do they make us uncomfortable? And isn't that a visceral kind of grumbling in its own way? The reading ends with a summary of Jesus' mission. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. But who's lost here? Zacchaeus? The crowd? Us? Does it matter? You see, Jesus will see us however we are. And I personally take comfort in this seeking out and saving the lost. Because there are more times than not that I feel a little lost. And it's comforting to know that he is seeking me out. In yesterday's ordination, I was honored to be called to proclaim the gospel. Although I must admit, I wasn't prepared for the gulp of incense I took in just before reading it. <laughs> Not my most forceful proclamation, as I avoided the need to cough or choke. I guess that will be more of an occupational hazard here as we welcome Brandon, Brandon and his ways into our practices here at St. Peter's. He's been known to ask, if there's no incense, is it really church? <laughs> Anyway, the gospel I read was from John, the Good Shepherd. It too speaks of Jesus' relentless search for us. Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. See, Jesus is always seeking us out. Jesus is always wanting to be in relationship with us. And as I said earlier, that's incredibly comforting, incredibly reassuring. As I was doing the research on this, I found a sermon preached in 2016 by a woman named Susan Butterworth. She's a Boston-based writer and teacher and a minister. And she ended her sermon with a prayer that she wrote. And I think it's a clear summation of what's happening when we're seen by Christ and what we're called to do as a result. It goes like this. Gracious God, 
Grant that we may see and be seen by our Savior and brother Christ. Grant that we may respond with joy to the good news, that we may be generous not only with our wallets, but with our hearts. Grant us freedom from making assumptions about others. Grant that we may see our neighbors as Christ sees them and open our hearts to the faith and generosity of those we may not like or trust. Gracious God, grant me the understanding that I may live. Amen. Standing together, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. This week we pray for our choir and for Cody, our seminarian. Lord, in your mercy, so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, be present with those who take counsel in the Standing Committee, the Bishop Search Committee, and the Transition Committee as we choose a bishop for this diocese, that they may in all things seek first your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
This morning we give thanks for the Muslim Student Association at Hendricks. We give thanks for the Bible Baptist Church. We give thanks for the Reverend Eber Ruiz and St. John's the Apostle in Chichi Castanango, Guatemala. We give thanks for the Commission on Liturgy and Music and the Diocesan Board of Trustees. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. This morning we lift up Katie, Megan, David, Sandy, Joyce, John, Dennis, the Guatemala Episcopal Medical Mission, Mark, Brittany, Geraldine, Chris, Janet, are there others? And continued prayer for Sarah, Betty, Carol, Sue, Eleanor, Shannon, and Anissa. For the Wisdom House, Moaz, Natalie, Mumina, Kansa, Rasha, and all those impacted by the conflict in Syria. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. This morning we lift up Lisa Tiemann, Sherman Apple, the victims in South Korea. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we delight light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Uh, first, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you. Um, there are, of course, days in everyone's lives where you will never forget um, the feeling and the experience and what happens. And yesterday was certainly one of those days for me. And 
I certainly appreciate each of you who came out, who uh, prayed, who watched online, uh, who helped pull the day together. Um, it was just a beautiful moment. And when you're in the middle of one of those moments, it's hard to take it all in. So last night I had to go back through and watch through it again just to have the experience. So um, again, I am just overwhelmed uh, by how you have welcomed Matthew and I into St. Peter's. It feels like we've always been here. But enough of that. Uh, here at St. Peter's, um, we have an open table which means wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome to receive communion. All that I ask of you is this, is that you walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
and gracious Father. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Please stand as you're able. Sandra, in the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak, help the afflicted. Show love to everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. to love and serve the Lord.